Hi guys, back once again for another video and this one is me building the motion control rig which I am using to film uh, lots of various different effect shots for Roscoe Berry and um, I've got to be honest this is the first time I've ever done engineering quite like this I have never ever built anything remotely close to building a motion control rig um, my understanding of the engineering involved was very limited. I guess I was jumping in both feet first, maybe head first, um, into something that really sh I should have had a bit more. I think if I had a bit more knowledge, I probably wouldn't have built it. Uh, but I think my my ignorance uh, probably helped. Um, th look, there's a few things that I change along the way, and you know, there's. Some upgrades that, I, that, I, that I, I do to the rig. There's still some upgrades I can still do to the rig. But uh, that's for another time. Right now though, I'm just going to go over the basics of what I did to build this motion control rig uh, for the camera. And uh, I, I'll try to list all the parts that uh, I used in the description down below. And I might even link to some uh, 3D files that I created for this model as well. Um... I think that's about it really. I think the only thing I won't bother linking to is um, screws and bolts because let's just put it this way. You need a selection. If you're going to build something like this, you need a selection of M4, M5 and M6 bolts. Um, and there were a couple of little things here or there like brackets that I already had um, in my supply drawer. But aside from that, everything else that I purchased, I'll, I'll try to put in the links in the description down below. And enough of that, let's get on with building a motion control rig. So, working on the motion control rig, you can see uh, this is the end bracket here with the idler wheel. Uh, it's literally, there's a, a rod going through there. I can, maybe I can show you it. Maybe I can't. Fully focus, it should. Uh, yeah, there's a rod going through there, the idler wheel. And it's just going into the this bottom piece that I, I made, which is just screwed into the frame. Uh, and then there's a hole in the top here which the rod is actually sitting in and um, yeah I just screwed out the frame like this so that's this end for the idler wheel um, which is okay now if you come across here to this is the ground tree have I, I think I'm zoomed in a bit I am so yeah here's the ground tree here and um, what I've got is uh, two bolts now that are bolted into the ground tree uh, that are just hanging down Oh, come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. And they're just hanging down there. Uh, one on this side, one on this side. And uh, that's going to be for the belt. The belt is just going to literally loop around and under tension, it's going to lock onto the, the uh, bolt. And that's going to allow it to travel back and forth. Uh, also, if we come down this end, we have the motor mounted to the end bracket there with the pulley wheel on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the belt which I have here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it around the the uh, wheel uh, put it on the pulley attach it to this here and then this should hold that solid theoretically so uh, let's crack on with that So I've now got the belt on and uh, you can see how uh, I've attached it here via the loop. It's just literally looped around the bolt in there. Uh, I'm, I am put the bottom nut on because uh, literally I'm gonna have to take it back off at some point. But what I'm doing now, uh, so this is this is on and this sort of uh, just slides up and down like this, very nicely. Um, I've got the the pan head here now, and basically what I've done now is I'm just putting the I've cut the bolts down, which they go in under there like that. And basically I'm just attaching this now, so this is then bolted securely to this plate. Um, now the rig that I've made in there uh, is uh, screwed to the um, the spindle. And it's sitting on that washer under there, you can't really see it. But it's there. Um, so this is, you know, I could, I could pick this, the whole rig up by this plate. This is not going anywhere. So this is nice and strong. So this is now bolted to that. I'm now, now bolting this to the uh, ground tree. 
and then the next thing to do then is to do the Z axis for this. But that's um, yeah. I'm just going to give, give it bolts that I've cut down now and uh, put put these through, and then uh, bolt this thing together. Okay, so at this point in the vi in the video and during the build, I opted to make a change, and uh, I decided not to use this. This was the original uh, engine motor mountain that I uh, 3D printed. I engineered and 3D printed. Uh, it works just fine. It actually works really really well. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but I decided that the rig uh, needed to be a little bit more powerful. And what I was going to do was, I decided that it was better to have the motor external and not have the entire rig sitting on the motor. And so that if anything went wrong I could just t detach the motor and just replace it. Uh, not only that, but uh, I felt that by having it separate I could gear it. So I could go from a smaller cog to a larger cog that put in less strain on the, on the motor itself. Um, also... I decided that uh, not only did, was I getting rid of this, but I decided to change the uh, ground tree plate as well on top. I decided that this, uh, as, as much as I love this, and it, it's, it's a beautiful piece of uh, engineered aluminium, uh, it's, it's very, very useful, just not for this. If I was putting a smaller camera on here, I, I would have said, yeah, go with this. But um, as it turns out, you know, at this point it was working really, really well, but I just felt like this was... I needed something a little bit more beefier. So, I had a bit of a think, and I took some of this, the uh, 2040 V-slot, and I chopped it down, and stood it up on the underside ground tree, and bolted it like this. So, one, one here, one here, so there's a gap in the middle. And um, that way I could sit a uh, Perspex plate, acrylic plate on top, one, a 6mm acrylic plate that I uh, fashioned to fit and drilled a uh, hole in the middle for the washer to go through. And then what I did was I uh, built a 32mm bearing flange that I, I put inside, which uh, captured between the purse backs and the 3D printed part. So uh, it was held in there, the, 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 it couldn't come out. When you see it, I, you'll understand. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, come back and do this because I know there's no video of me actually uh, changing over. So uh, anyway, enough of my jibber jabber, let's get back to building the motion control rig. So this debris field is how the motion control rig is looking right now. Um, <laughs> everything here, uh, this has been done and put back together and taken off at least three times, four times maybe. Um, gone for a redesign, gone for an upgrade, um, put back together, taken apart. It's just been, uh, you know, there's bits of it, bits everywhere. Uh, so, but this is the final design now, which is what I'm settling on, which I am actually taking apart again. Um, but um, it's not not too much of an issue. Basically, this isn't tall enough, so when this sits in due to, to rotate, it's actually not tall enough to clear this cog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and basically lift it up by just putting a stack of washers underneath it, and that's pretty much it, really. That's that's what's going to be uh, there. I'm just going to raise it by like one or two washers, just so we, just so we can clear this. Once once that's done, um, great. You know, it does clear it, but there's no wiggle room. So if, should it wobble or anything once once the camera's on it, it might come around and actually just clout this. So that's why I want to lift it up. It's only going to go up by about a mil, two mil. So two washers on there, and it'll be it'll be good to go.
Right, I'm just adding the, adding the wash to the underside of the shoe. Uh, what we got here in my value pack of washers. Mm, let's add another two. Let's put the bolt through. There we are, lovely. Let's go and set that on top. Let's tighten that up. <clears throat> Take this one. Huh, that's one flush. What have I done there? Oh. It's great when things go wrong, isn't it? That's better. <clears throat> there you go. So this can still, this has still has a bit of turn to it. That's not an issue. Right, it seems like it is, but it's not. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a nut on here. Take it right way down. And what's going to happen is it's going to get clamped by the nut on the bolt. So, let's put the spanner on. Take it right up. And now that ain't going anywhere. That is as solid as solid as can be. Oh, and they've got Allen keys coming off everywhere. Yep, there you go. That's been round. Lovely. Next thing 3D printed a lug because they wanted it to use it, just use it as a spacer, really. And this is going to go into the Capture that I made. Oh no, wait a minute. That's, that's interesting. Which one's which? I've got a feeling that's the old one. It is the old one. I made two, and I made one specifically slightly bigger because this will sit in into a bearing. Nothing wrong with it, it's just. Uh, this will sit into a bearing quite nicely and uh, bearing orderly. There's a little bit of wiggle room there though. So what I did was I remade another one. I made it so that it is actually difficult to get it into the bearing. And that way it actually, there's no wiggle room at all. So let's just get this on here. Lovely. Now, of course, there's the bearing in this capture that I made, the flange. And this is going to sit down on top of this piece of acrylic here. And I'm going to bolt that in. This then goes, in fact, let's just do that. Let's just bolt this in. Um, just want to make sure that this acrylic is around the way I want it. I think that'll work. Right, so where's my bolts too? Um, this can be hard work as well because the way this goes together, um, sometimes these bolts can be off at an angle if you don't if you don't put them in straight first time off because it's a very narrow hole. There we go. There's one. So yeah, you've got to get them in pretty much right first time. Otherwise, there'll be an absolute bugger. Now when it comes to tightening this down, I have to tighten them down sequentially. 
so I can't do I can't tighten them all down at the same time. I've got to do do one a little bit, one a little bit, one a little bit, one a little bit, and keep going round until they're all tightened down. It does mean that they they're going to be very very secure. Which is a bit of a pain in the ass. So, this is now bolt bolted to the flange. The flange is bolted to the Perspex plate. Perspex plate is now bolted to the framework and it does turn beautifully. And there's clearance over the cog. And now I've got to put the belt on from here to here. When I get the new belt, the new belt will just slip over, hopefully, fingers crossed. If I've got to move it, I've got to move it. But uh, the new belt should be fit this perfectly. I may, might have to put an extra wheel on to tension it, um, but that's not a problem. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, this this should uh, this should work perfectly. Uh, plenty of clearance. Um, beautiful turning action. Beautiful. Um, look at that. A little bit of a wobble there, but if I ever did that to my camera, you have my permission to kick me in the nuts. Um, because <laughs> at no point do you want to be doing that with a camera. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's beautiful, smooth as hell. Um, yeah, so that's that. Now I'm gonna put a temporary belt on here to uh, test it out. I'm gonna wire it, uh, wire it up. I'm going to put the y-axis on here as well, the supporting parts for the y-axis, which are not there, they're over here. I think that's one, I think that's the other. There we go. They're going to go on there like that. It's going to be a beast. So, this is looking like this right now. And... Camera's obviously going to sit in here. Um, I have to find a way to make it. When I, when I get around to it, I'll re-engine it near this just to make it a bit more stable. Um, but for right now, you know, just to give me a work in motion control, it's stable enough. Plus, there's going to be a lot of weight going on this as well, so that should stabilize it a bit. Um, I know one of the problems is the fact that, that the rail isn't very wide. So, um, that's part of the problem. Plus, you're going through one singular axis through here. Um, this is a little bit loose on the track, so there are things that can be tightened up anyway. Um, now, right now, I've got this on the timing belt here. Timing belt I had to make myself. There isn't a timing belt that comes in at that size. I've got one on order, which should fit. Um, it's going to be very tight though, I mean it's going to be a case of, I'm going to have to put it over there, over the large cog first, put the whole assembly together and then test see if it will actually go in. Um, but right now I'm going to wire up the motors to this, oh I've got to take the other motor off as well because I've got another motor here which has a bit more power to it and a bit more torque to it. So I'm going to take the other motor off, I'm going to put this one on, and then all the motors are going to be uh, identical then. So let's just plug this in. There we go. This can now be plugged right up to the board, and uh, I can do a test then to see if the damn thing works. Okay, so I've got the Y-axis on. And that's set up. I've just applied the motor now to the Z axis, and this is going to uh, feed up here to uh, a larger cog. I haven't got it. It's going to be a 62 tooth wheel like this. This is um, just an idler wheel um, that I was going to put on earlier, which is going to, but obviously it would have to overhang the rail, and I didn't want to do that, so I decided against it. Uh, I've just got one of these. Uh, this is a 40 cog. I'm just going to put that on there and tighten this in. And when I get, I've got the 60 on order, but what I'll do for now is I'll just set up the system so that I can uh, apply the cog up here. And what I'll do is I'll just use another 40 
for now, just so I can put a belt on and see how it, how it runs. Um, I'm hoping as well that I'm going to be able to fit a limiter switch to this as well. Uh, I want to put a limiter at either end, which just goes to the cut off, uh, because the board, the uh, CNC shield, it comes with cut offs as well as an emergency stop. So um, I could fit switches either end of this rail. Uh, to, so that should the camera hit it, go too far, it'll just automatically cut off. And the same, same with, with this, if I, if I wanted to I could fit it so that the belt could go up and around and then get cut off to stop it from actually slamming into anything. Now, the other thing to remember here with this is that I've built this, let me just see if I can come up wide a little bit, let's lift this up a little bit, there we go. So I've built this and it's quite quite a large rig here and there's a lot of space here for movement there has to be because of the camera that's going to be sitting on here you've got a, a it's not just the, the camera that's sitting on here the body but the lens that sticks out in front and if you make this too low then the camera has a, the op option of actually tilting down and having the lens smack into this bar that's an expensive amount of glass you don't want that to happen so What's going to happen is that the, the camera is actually going to sit much higher up. It's going to sit, sit up here so that when, when it tilts it can actually swing right under. Uh, that's what we want to make sure that the camera has clearance. Um, the other way to remember, think about this, is that this is essentially a motion control rig upside down. Like, like this isn't the usual way that you would do it. You'd have the camera actually hanging from a crane. But I don't have a crane. So we're doing it the other way up, but this it works exactly the same way. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get on with fitting this motor now. Uh, fitting, doing the cog for this, uh, and then uh, putting it all together, I guess. So, using a bit of a quick solve view, I need to put one of these behind here, so I can I can screw it in. Now, how do I hold that in place when uh, I need to screw it in? How do I line it up? How do I get into position? I could turn it on the side. I could lay it lay down. I could bug around trying to get it in place. I could bug around with the pliers trying to hold it in. But no, what I've got is my Allen key and. A bloody powerful magnet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put that on there. I'm going to put this on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this down inside. And then just put the thread in. Like so. I'm going to take that off. And just tighten it up. No farting about. So I'm working on the Z-axis couple now that's going to hold the camera. This is upside down. Uh, basically what I've done is I've taken one of these heavy duty L brackets and I've just cut it down. You can see the end there where I've uh, cut it off. Um, basically I'm putting this now in place here. So I'm just going to line these up with these nuts. And uh, find my bolt where I put them. A nice little packet of them. It's nice to buy more than you need, just in case. Let's put that there. Wade through this rubbish to try to find my stuff. Uh, this should just pop straight in. And I'll just get a nice little tighten down. It's biting onto something. There we go. Now where's this one gone? Right there.
Sorry for putting on a frame here, I'm just trying to get this on. I'm going to make sure this is central, otherwise it's not going to... Um, actually, I'm going to loosen this up and move this out a little bit because there is a little lip inside this bracket and if you're too close to the corner, it actually won't let it sit down flash. So, I'm just going to loosen it off just so I can... I think it's still biked in. There we go, that's it. I can actually feel that just actually go down flush onto the metal. Basically it's just where they've crimped it on, on this corner part there. So they can do a 90 degree bend with it and still have it retain strength. Uh, I might have to put washers on these. But for now, just to get the damn thing built, It'll do. And that's what, well, the camera's going to sit on. And the pivot point's going to be here and here. And the camera's going to sit up here, so the mounting bracket's going to be about here. So they'll be at the actual pivot point. The camera will actually be sitting at pivot. So, doing a quick little test upgrade for the uh, motion control system and basically what I've done here is I've just printed this block inside here, as you can see and uh, I fitted one of these bearings to it. Now there's a hole going straight down through it right away through underneath and that is smack dab in the middle and what's going to happen is that to add a bit of extra stability I've got this bolt here and this is going to run down through the bearing and what, what this is going to do, because this is bolted to the underside of this plate like this um, this is now solid now it, obviously I haven't printed it as solid, I've printed it at 50% uh, no 20% this is uh, but I'm, I'm going to test this out to see if this works Three, uh, print it again as solid and then uh, rebuild it. Um, but I've got to test out first. But the idea is that this bearing here is going to hold this one center. Because the problem with this is that because it's going through a single pivot point, it's able to wobble. And so the idea here is that I put a bearing down here as well, and this can no longer move. This can only move around a central pivot point as opposed to being able to wobble back and forth. So it just makes things a little bit more stable. That's all. Um, Starts to weigh a bit though. I mean, uh, it's, it's a good thing I, I upgraded the motors, uh, which is a, a, a big uh, thing. The motors that I had on it would have been great for a smaller rig, but this is starting to pull some weight, and you really need something that can that can handle it. These are 76 NCM motors, so uh, they, they they can uh, take a bit of weight. Um, so now what I'm going to do now is put the locks all in place, now all the bolts, and bolt all this back together, and then give it a test run. 
So you can see this here, I've got the new belt on and uh, what I've done here is I've uh, put on a belt tensioner. I just 3D printed one quickly and put it on. Uh, it's nice and smooth so it's not going to really wear down. Um, it doesn't really affect the belt any, it just makes sure that the belt is nice and tight to the uh, wheel. Uh, it's a quick, easy, simple solution. Uh, now the next thing I'm working on now is this, this rail here um, for the camera mount. You can see where I've put these two marks here. Uh, I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill through there and uh, I've cut down these bolts and these are going to go through here like so and uh, they're going to mount into the underside of this which my camera is then going to sit on. Now um, I'm really not happy with this assembly. Uh, I could do much better. Uh, I just, you know, this is a for now solution and when I can get get a bit more cash in and I can get uh, some tidy parts then I will upgrade but that's the that's the plus side to building your own rig you know you can start off with a very very basic thing just engineer it so that uh, you know you get it working and then you can upgrade it as you choose so uh, yeah I'm gonna get on drill those holes and get these fitted so one of the small additions that I've made now to the uh, uh, motion control unit is the addition of this box here and uh, I built it just so that it can be bolted straight onto the end of the rig and uh, it houses the CNC shield and the driver for the stepper motors plus I've also fitted on here an emergency stop button so if anything goes wrong I can just hit the emergency stop and uh, everything just ceases uh, I've also put the ports in there so once this is fixed in place, the wire will come out through the middle there. But we've got the USB uh, controller there. These wires then will be fitted out through this slot here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, glue hot melt in there just so that there's no tension on these wires. So that if these wires get tugged, they're not gonna, it's not going to rip on the board. So, um, yeah. That's, that looks pretty good, in fact. Um, I'm going to paint this uh, black so that it matches the uh, black motors and the 3D printed parts on here as well. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that, looks, that looks pretty snazzy, I think. Just uh, on the end there, there's going to be a lid on top uh, as well. I'm going to make that, and uh, it's uh, pretty good to go. And this is how this is looking now. I've given the box that contains the CNC driver a coat of gloss black so that it matches the motor and the bracket that holds it on no other reason than uh, it just colour matches with the belt um, <laughs> vanity, nothing but vanity uh, up here we have the rig as you can see um, there's the jig that holds the camera on and uh, onto the Z axis the Y axis uh, on, held onto the, the plate there the plate is now holding on and has the this little meter here and a, and a here that you can't see there you go which points to zero and the meter matic 2000 turbo um, which is a piece of masking tape with some numbers written on it uh, which tells me you know this is this is at zero right here and then this goes to 50 this goes up to minus 50 and then uh, that that's at hundred percent either way so so it's a one meter travel plus or minus from zero uh, and that's pretty much the rig, you know, it, uh, that's pretty much how it looks. And it, it's a bit of a beast. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just, uh, set this up now and I'm going to do a test run.
So that's pretty much it. That's that's the rig built, complete and done. Um, I don't think I've missed anything out really. I think the only thing I haven't mentioned really is the software that I'm using to drive it. And the software I'm using to drive uh, this uh, CNC shield is GRBL. Uh, I chose to use GRBL because there were other software out there but the other software was, first of all, asking for money. And the other reason is that GRBL is so simple to use that once you've really figured out the, the basics of how the package works, um, you can pretty much just type in your own programming. You can pretty much just say, I want X to move so far at, at such a speed, and I want Y to move at, at this timing, I want Z to move at this timing. You can even set up uh, a, pretty much you can do a CNC pattern then, and just move it X, Y, and Z and upload that code and then it'll, it'll just run it that way as well so it's very very simple very very easy to use um, there are things that I, I am looking to upgrade on the rig one thing I'm, I'm looking forward to doing is at some point hopefully fingers crossed um, I get to change the jig up the top because that really does need a, a, a bit more of a slightly more professional looking <laughs> thing than uh, two brackets holding onto a piece of aluminium for the dear life. Um, and the other thing is I might change the belt that runs the x-axis for a lead screw. And the reason why I, I thinking of doing that is because actually I got a hold of, uh, I got a quick look at the um, motion control rig that ILM were using. And guess what? They were using pretty much. It's pretty identical to what I've built, which you know is is it's good news. Um, but they've they the other thing that they've changed differently is that they've they have got a lead screw instead of a, a belt. And the only thing I can think of is that the belt does vibrate. And also, I think that having a lead screw in there, you might get a little bit more um, control of a smoother action as well. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how this this works. Drawbacks to having the belt is that the belt does vibrate, and um, that vibration at higher speeds is somewhat noticeable in the video footage. So, but at slower speeds, ah, it's 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 as good as anything. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. Hopefully. Um, you know, I don't leave anything out. I'm gonna see about putting the items that I used to uh, purchase uh, in the description down below. Um, and that's about it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you next time.